Out with the old, and in with the new. What does the force gauge mean for me and you? On this episode of Battle Tips Guides Thing, featuring the force gauge. Now the Force Gauge is a new system that has become the tournament standard, replacing the old special action. Don't forget your special action, because we need to remember those that came before us. Now that we have the Force Gauge, we have to understand how it works, how it affects many of the new and old characters to the cast, as well as some strategies that have popped up in playing with the Force Gauge. Now, the Force Gauge is an entirely new system that replaces the special action. And this means that we have to go over how it works before I start talking to you guys about how you should use it. Now, the Force Gauge gives everybody this universal resource called Force. And each player starts the game with two of it. Now, at the end of each beat, each player gains one Force. Except for when they have 7 health or below, in which case they gain 2 force instead. Note that force has a maximum cap of 10 and you can't go beyond that. So any force that you would have gained beyond 10 is kind of pointless. And alongside this new force resource, we have the new force special action. This force special action effectively replaces the old special action that we had. And it does way less things than the old special action did. Most notably, uh, it lacks cancel. So this force gauge removes cancel from the game and actually also removes pulse from the special action. And this is very interesting to take note of because of the fact that, well, it removes these two really powerful options from the game. And a lot of people believe that this makes overdrive finishers that much more powerful because they no longer have to contest with cancel and pulse. Now we'll talk more about that later on, but the fourth special action does two things. You can either finisher or switch. Finisher happens when your force is greater than your life. So now the finisher is no longer limited to being 7 health or below. If you have 9 life and have 10 force, you can still use your finisher. Now what does this do? If you have less life than your force, you spend force equal to your life, then perform your finisher. It's as simple as that. It's effectively kind of the same as using finisher with the old special action. Now the other option is way more interesting than finisher in my opinion. This is switch. If your life is greater than your force, which basically means that if you're not doing your finisher, do switch instead. When you're doing switch, it's quite interesting because you gain one force, you may then switch the side of your overdrive finisher, and you can still execute your attack pair as if you play the base without the style. This is very, very versatile. Not only does this gain you more force and more resources, not only does it let you switch your overdrive finisher, meaning that you no longer preclude yourself from using your other overdrive finisher if you pick one, you still get to attack and perform an attack pair. This is quite a powerful option to many characters in the cast, especially because it gives you more force, which can do lots of awesome things, which we'll talk about later on. Uh, it lets you use the other side of your finisher, so if your opponent's making use of a strategy that makes your current finisher bad, you can easily switch. And of course, it doesn't lose you a lot of tempo because it can let you still attack while gaining all of those other advantages. This is quite a powerful option and we'll talk more about its strategy later on. Now that we've gone over the components of the force gauge system, we have to talk about what we can spend that beautiful force on. There are two things you can spend force on. Number one are overloads, and number two, pulse. You see, we start off with overloads. Overloads are very interesting because they kind of like act like EX moves in fighting games, which basically means that they allow you to supercharge your attack to give it different properties. By spending 2 force, you can give your attack power plus 1, soak 1, priority plus 2, or stun guard 2. Note that you can have as many overloads active on your current attack as possible, but you can't repeat them. So you can do power plus 1, priority plus 2, but you can't do power plus 1, power plus 1. It can't happen that way. This means that all in all, if you have 8 force, you can then spend all of it to have an attack that has power plus 1, soak 1, stun guard 2, and priority plus 2 on it, which makes almost any attack quite potent. Now we'll talk about the strategy on overloads later on, but note one thing, that a lot of these effects are actually symmetrical. 
For example, if your opponent anties power plus 1, you can easily counter anti it with a soak 1 to effectively make it so that they never anti in the first place. This applies to priority plus 2 as well. If your opponent anties priority plus 2, you can easily anti your own priority plus 2 to negate his effect. Uh, this basically means that a lot of the overload management in this game is all about making your opponent waste force because a lot of effects can easily be countered at counteracted by counter anding the appropriate overload, you can actually gain a huge benefit if your opponent no longer has the ability to counter anti you. So a lot of the meta of the overload focuses on that, but we'll talk more about that later on. And then we have Pulse. Force can be spent on Pulse as well, and this is a very powerful option, because by spending 7 force as an end of beat effect, you can then move up to 3 spaces or move an adjacent opponent up to 3 spaces. Note that this does not act like old pulse and it doesn't cancel your opponent's attack pair. Not like it would really matter at that point because you're already at the end of beat. But it does still give you the positioning you need, however not as powerfully. But remember that you can reuse this as many times as you want because it no longer is attached to the special action card, which is very very interesting because it lets you reposition a lot of times during the game as opposed to just one big time, one big time. Note that both players have the option to pulse in a turn, but both players can't pulse in the same turn. This means that if the active player has chosen to pulse already, the reactive player cannot react by pulsing themselves. They have to wait until the next beat to do so. So keep that in mind. So now that I've talked to you guys about the force gauge, let's talk about how it affects a lot of the characters and a lot of the new upcoming characters. There are many points to point out here, but it's let's keep it simple. Number one, stats. Characters who care about stats will care about the force gauge a lot because it gives them, well, the stats that they need. However, note that a lot of the antis, again, as I've said, are counterbalancing. So characters who care about absolute differences, for example, in terms of priority, having one priority against two priority is hardly any different than six priority against seven priority because they both have an absolute difference of one. Therefore, for a large majority of the cast, these bonuses almost mean nothing because of the fact that well, the difference doesn't really change that much if assuming you and the opponent have the same amount of force. Again, having different amounts of force will result in different things happening because you can't exactly counter anti every single account anti your opponent makes. So uh, that makes resource management that much more important, but we'll talk more about that later on. Uh, the thing about this is that characters who care about absolute differences in stats don't care about the special the force gauge. Technically, but characters who care about numbers, specific, specific numbers, really, really love the force gauge. Now, Mark, what are you talking about? What do you mean specific numbers? For example, a character like Schecter, whose cards refer to a specific amount of priority. For example, her brand lets her ignore stun guard if she has a specific amount of priority. This means that by anteing priority plus two, your opponent, uh, you then gain the benefit that's listed on that card that much easier without having to spend that much malice tokens. Not a lot of characters actually refer to specific numbers on their card, but the characters that do benefit greatly from the force gauge. Now aside from this, with the new force gauge, everybody can now anti. And you know what that means? Everybody can now get anti bluff. And this is a very important thing to note because a lot of the previous characters had really, really great anti-bluffs on their cards. And this furthers that advantage. Anybody who can make opponents waste resources loves the force gauge because by making them waste resources, you can then capitalize on the overloads without fear of being counter anti It's as simple as that and it's quite powerful. Now, the last point that I want to note here is that there is one overload that doesn't have a counter anti, and that's the Stun Guard 2 overload. The Stun Guard 2 overload is quite powerful because of the fact that no other anti your opponent can make will counterbalance its effect. Now this can be quite potent and quite powerful because of the fact that Stun Guard is quite powerful. Uh, I, 
It's just that simple. A lot of characters in the game hate getting stunned. And a lot of middlers oftentimes don't have enough defense to make up for their really risky attacks. However, with the introduction to this stun guard 2 overload, a lot of previous attack pairs that were bad are now freaking amazing because you can give them stun guard 2. So when you're looking at your old characters, watch out for the fact that there are some attacks that only have stun guard 2 and would have been awesome if they had stun guard 3. Well now, you can give them stun guard 3 plus with this overload and that's quite powerful. Note that on a base level among all characters, this also shifts how good your bases are. What do you mean by that Marco? It's simple. Shot, considered to be the best base, in my opinion, is now even better because by itself you can just anti this overload and then you will suddenly have a stun guard for attack without any style, making it so that shot plus overload stun guard 2 is now one of the most powerful plays you can make without a style. And that's freaking absurd. But on the flip side, one of the weaker bases in the game, again, in my opinion, which was Grasp, is now even worse. Because Grasp's main problem is that it gets countered by Stun Guard 2. Overload Stun Guard 2 gives you Stun Guard 2 on literally any attack in the game. This means that if your Grasp play does not have any plus power on it, it sucks. It does nothing. Because Stun Guard 2 will ruin your day. This means that a lot of stun gun fast characters like Schecter, Demetras, and so on have a big problem because of this new force gauge anti. So keep that in mind when you're playing a character who focuses on stunning their opponent. Your play might not be as good as you thought it was. Another way it heavily affects a lot of the cast is the loss of cancel and pulse. Cancel is so good and I guess Pulse is really good as well. So maybe they were a bit too overpowered and we had to get rid of them. Of course, there are also um, lots of weird interactions if two special actions met each other. And the Force Gauge does away with that. And I think that makes it more clear to many players. However, the loss of Cancel and Pulse is a great, great loss for this game. Because a lot of characters levied on those two very powerful options to win the game. So now, without those, a lot of brawlers can no longer make you lose options using the cancel, which makes it harder to close the game. So remember that characters who couldn't close the game before have an even harder time now because of the fact that cancel is gone. This might make it so that certain characters become weaker, but at the same time, this means that characters who were more consistent before are even more valuable now that cancel is gone. Pulse works similarly. Now that you don't have that one safe option that lets you move everywhere on the board, a lot of the positioning characters are that much weaker because they can't easily get into the positioning they need. However, the new pulse option still gives them that positioning they might need, but remember that if you're in a very desperate situation, it doesn't get you out. So. For the pulse now is more about you're in a slightly bad situation and you can get back to normal instead of before wherein it was you were in a really bad situation and then suddenly you're winning. But it does have one distinct advantage to it in that you no longer can get counter pulse. And getting counter pulse used to be a big problem because it would just negate the positioning advantage that you gained. Now that pulse can only be played by one player in a beat and it happens at the end of the beat, you have guaranteed at least one beat of taking advantage of that new positioning that you have. Which means that Pulse can now be used aggressively. And this is quite powerful, especially if you want to take advantage and close out the game. So, what does this mean in summary? With the loss of cancel, a lot of characters can no longer close the game. But the thing is that the new Pulse is actually a way for you to close the game. By positioning yourself in a way that makes you easy uh, that makes it easier for you to kill the opponent. At the same time, the loss of old pulse means that you can no longer get out of a dire situation and suddenly be put in a winning situation, but you can now get into a slightly bad situation and go back to a slightly winning situation, but you can guarantee yourself at least one beat of advantage over it because your opponent can't counter pulse you that easily. So we lose some things, we gain some things, but it's quite powerful nonetheless. And that's pretty much some of the big things you have to remember when play using the force gauge with older characters. Uh, because a lot of those battle guides did not take that in mind. 
Now that that's over with, we can talk about some degenerative strategies. Now, degenerative strategies are very interesting with the force gauge. Degenerative strategies are basically strategies that I think are so powerful that they basically apply to everyone in the cast when using the force gauge. And these are important things to keep in mind because, well, they apply to almost everyone. Number one, management of your force. Force management is basically the meta of this game. Uh, you have to remember that force is quite powerful if it doesn't get counter anti So, the way to avoid getting counter anti is to make sure your opponent doesn't have enough force to do so. This basically means that you have to manage your force very well and at least keep it on par with your opponents. Because if the moment you drop below them in force, it means that they can overload one more time than you can. And this can be devastating because your opponent can bluff. For example, they're playing an attack that's meant to be fast, and they anti-soak one on it. And you're like, okay, so if I want to stun them, I will anti the power plus one as well. But that was all an elaborate ruse. They were never planning on being slow to begin with. So they anti the priority plus two, and now you don't have enough force to counter anti that with your own priority plus two, which results in you losing the beat. Having a lot of force on your hands gives you so much versatility in this game because it allows you to bluff your opponent to bits. So remember that, management of your force and anti-bluffing becomes super important in this game and I highly recommend you master it immediately. Number 2. Force special action is a style, technically, which basically makes it really interesting. Because unlike the original special action, you can put this thing in your discard because of the switch option on it. What does this mean? If you put this card onto the discard that will rotate into your hand last, you can effectively have four working styles in your hand. This is very, very powerful. Meaning that on beat 1, instead of having 15 attacks, you now have 20 attacks. And that is super good and super powerful. And again, versatility and options are one of the most powerful things you can have in this game, even if you don't want to recognize it. And that alone makes this play so good that I think almost everyone in the game will just put this in their discard at the start of the match. And if you do otherwise, you better have a really good reason. For example, Kadath has a very good reason because two of his cards are dead without his gate trap at the start of the game. So maybe having the Force special action is a much better option for him. But otherwise, outside of that, almost everyone, and I literally mean almost everyone will do this. So I highly recommend putting it in your discard from the start of the game. But aside from it being a style, it's also a style. <laughs> so it's not just about the discards that make this for special action quite powerful. You can actually also pair it with your regular attacks. And a lot of people will benefit from it in two ways. Number one, a lot of characters are often placed into situations where in their styles all suck. And you sometimes wish you just had a style that was blank. For example, Voko has a lot of minimum range on his attacks. And if he's at melee range from the opponent, none of his styles will hit. Wouldn't it be better if he could just play a blank style? Well, now you can with the Force Special Action card and making use of the Switch action. This not only gains you the benefits of getting Force and switching your Overdrive, but you can also basically still hit your opponent even if you've been card locked. So this is a great way of getting out of card lock if you so desire. But the other way is much more prominent in this game, and that's when dash happens. Sometimes you want to dash but all the cards in your hand are really good. So don't you just wish that you could just pair it with some throwaway style? Well, force special action is that throwaway style you've wished for because it basically lets you make dashes that give you resources. What? <laughs> It's so good! Now everybody can use this force dash and still maintain a lot of options in their hand. Because the moment you cycle up the force special action, you gain a style to replace it, giving you the force styles like at the start of the game. This basically means that force special action dash is the way to go if you need to dash. Again, there are certain exceptions like characters who regain tokens and a beat with certain styles, but for the rest of the cast, Force dash always, always, always.
So I hope all you guys liked this analysis of the force gauge system. I'm not the biggest fan of the force gauge system. A lot of people know that. But at the same time, it's the tournament standard now, and we have to analyze how we can break it down and use it to our biggest advantages. In this video, I've listed a few of the advantages you can possibly gain from the new system. And it's very important that you guys keep this in mind when using your old characters, but also when I'm analyzing the new characters. A lot of the new characters in Fate might seem lacking without the Force Gauge. And I'm not sure whether they were balanced around Force Gauge or not, but it seems that without the Force Gauge, some characters are just downright bad. But with Force Gauge, they suddenly gain a new life and become really, really interesting characters. So keep it in mind that in my new videos and new battle guides, the Force Gauge will be a thing, and it will be something that I will focus my attention on in terms of when I'm analyzing the characters. So keep that in mind. Now, you guys have to make sure that at the end of the day, Force Gauge, I believe, is all about resource management. And if you're not good at it, I suggest that you do get good at it, because it's the way to pave yourself to victory. Now, without much else to say, don't forget your special action. Thank you, Lord of Indians. Thank you, and good night.